All right, it's starting. It's recording. Cool, guys. It's been a while. Welcome back to the Daily Recap. It is August 2nd, 2019. It's been a while since we did one. That's because the market's been pretty slow for small caps. Uh, just because the market is slow does not mean you should deviate from your plan, guys. That you should not deviate from your process. That you should not be doing FOMO and you should not be chasing stocks. You know, it's better to make zero dollars than it is to work all day and lose. If you want to lose money, go to the casino. <laughs> if you, I mean, guys at McDonald's will make more money than you if you're going to start chasing, right? So don't chase. But I'm going to get something out of the way. August 17, guys, is the big one-year anniversary of MIC. So thank you, everybody, for showing up. I hope to get, see you all there. Uh, Monday is the live trading. Uh, the live, the lifetime guy is going to be a treat, man. You guys get to come early and everything. So hopefully show up, man. Uh, the guys are a monthly show up on Saturday to meet up and show me how, how focused and hungry you are. Maybe we'll let you into the Monday. So if there's some extra room, you know, we can let you in if there's room. So, um, the live trading is going to be for annuals and lifetime, but like I said, man, if you're if you're really dedicated and you show us that you really want to come come to the event, never know, man, never know. Come to the meetup, and then you know there's room. Maybe we can do something, okay, or upgrade there. But um, definitely come because we're gonna show you all this live. Um, I would be photoshopping all my stuff live for you, so I'll show you how I I was able to Photoshop so well, guys. <laughs> so show up. I'm gonna show you how to Photoshop. I'm gonna show you how to lease expensive cars so that I can so that you can promote yourself, so that you can run a new chat room service after you're done uh, making your first profitable trade, right? That's that's what it seems like everyone's doing, right? It seems like everybody's starting a service now because because trading is so easy, man. <laughs> you know, you you make money for one day and now you are a guru. So <laughs> I will show you, you know, the steps on how to. We're going to start maybe a multi-level marketing program for gurus. I find that kind of funny, right? <laughs> you learn after me. I'm going to help you start a chat room. I'll get a percentage. Multi-level marketing, man. How awesome is that, right? Instead of selling lipstick for Avon, <laughs> you can now be selling chat room services. But um, anyway, so what I wanted to do was to show you, you know, in – any market condition, guys. When when things are good, I mean things are good. When things are bad, things are bad. But it has, in my opinion, it has nothing to do with the market. What the market does is it gives you the opportunity to make money, but it also gives you the opportunity to lose a lot of money. So when markets are running very hot, guys, when there's plays all over the place, if you are in the wrong side of the trade, you're gonna die. It doesn't matter what market condition you're at, right? I mean, you have to be on the right side of the trade. So when people are, oh, the market's slow, it sucks. I mean, it sucks too if the market is hot and you're losing. So it doesn't matter. So basically, I think in my opinion, when you know things are slow and it sucks because there's no opportunity, but it doesn't mean that trading is sucks. It, it, there's still like today, there's trading opportunities. You just have to find them. You have to learn the skill to find them and how to pick out the stocks in the process. And you know what? It's like fishing, man. Uh, you're going to catch a bunch of fishes in a row or you're going to go home hungry. So it's fast. It's feast or famine, I call it. But at the same time, <clears throat> always, always, guys, keep to your process. So I want to show what I wrote out before we start so I can remind myself. You know, I wrote decent days for some long cat. What I did well. So, you know, you can start making these sort of blogs for yourself. Each day, write down what you did well, what you did not do well, and what you need to work on. So maybe that's what you do. So this is, consider this a classroom where you, you know, you, you're taking college courses to learn to trade. And, uh, oh shoot, do I have any alpha? No, I don't have any. Should I short this? Fuck it. <laughs> I was gonna trade while we do this, that's good, dude. Uh, I don't need to do that. Um, but every day, start keeping a blog, maybe. You know, just, just for yourself to see what you did well, what you didn't do well, and what you need to do. Um, we're going to get to this. So what, what I usually do for the day recap, guys, I want to start in showing you my trades, and, what, you know, and we'll go through there. So uh, let's take a look at what's running right now, AFA. 
So maybe that's what we we'll do first. We're gonna show alpha. <clears throat> so what I did alpha was this. In the morning, Alex did well. He, he shorted it and it drank down. He made the money at the open. Uh, these stock, these are like more of a, so what my process usually is, I wanna walk you through my process, okay? And once again, this is the process I got. What you're gonna do is you can, you can maybe use it as a guideline and then change it for yourself. So I always begin every single research. So every time I, so the first thing I do is I pull up my scanner. And if you do not have a scanner, we, I post it all day long. There are guys in the room that you, you, know, you can share a scanner with guys. So you save money by joining MIC, okay? Uh, you don't need a scanner, man. I look at my scanner maybe five times a day, 10 times a day at the most. And that's because I'm running out of stocks to trade. You know, I, I pull up a scanner. So this is the scanner I use. You can use whatever you want. This is, uh, I'm not here to promote anybody, so I'm not gonna say the name, but you know, you can use whatever scanner you want, but um, <clears throat> this is Equity Feed. I've been using them for like over a decade, dude. <laughs> I like the, you know, it's just simple. I've, I've used my same, let me share my filter information. It's very simple. People think that there's some fancy shit that you're buying. People are selling these filters for like a thousand dollars. I'm like, are you fucking idiot? I mean, anything to make money, I guess. But you know, you know what my scanner says, guys? Give me every stock who's 8% <laughs> up on the day. That's it. Stocks range you from 10 cents to $10 with number of trades from 100. So we don't want to one print, right? So I'm like, dude, you want to buy, here, 1,000 bucks right here, guys. <laughs> You're going to find out my filter. All it does is it shows every stock that's up 8% for the day and over 100 share uh, trades. 1,000 bucks, man. But you know what? For you guys, it's on sale. I'm going to sell this to you guys for 50% off. Fuck it, do I'm gonna sell it for 90% off, only 100 bucks. Fuck it, I'm gonna sell it for 99% off. <laughs> Just give me a dollar, man. Buy me a beer, how about buy me a beer? I'll give you two for free. You know what I'm saying? So be, be aware of all this stupid stuff people are selling, man. I, I just don't get it. I mean, like, dude, how much money you gotta rate your people, right? Selling filters and stuff for $1,000. I mean, dude, filters are not gonna make you money. Filters are gonna find you the stocks, okay? And so the trading is, is what's gonna make you money. So my process is I look up, what I do every morning is I look at my scanner and see what new stocks are moving. Then I go and research them. But in addition, I'm, I'm, the better trades for me are always a low hanging fruit, which is the hot place from yesterday that we, you know, um, unfortunately today there is no low hanging fruit. The reason why, because there's nothing that moved yesterday. There's no real big hot chick of the day type of stock that moved yesterday for me to play today. And so that's why I didn't really have any low-hanging fruits today, right, guys? C-A-N-F was the only low-hanging fruit from yesterday. So let's take a look at that real quick. I'm just going to pull that real quick. Freaking dead. Dead stock, man. There's, there's really no trades in the stock. So yesterday's stock, boom, went down. Hardly any volume. So today's low-hanging fruit was this play. $3 line, $2.90 line, never came. You know, I didn't think it's going to do anything anyway. So that's why we didn't have any low hanging fruit today. But, you know, so I woke up today. I saw RHE, guys. Actually, let's look at Alpha first. I'm going to do RHE because okay? it says Alpha is running. What I always like to do is I, I go, I use this site, Finviz, because it gives me all the quick information. But if you're in the chat room, guys, did I miss a low hanging fruit? I'm sorry. Okay. Ah, crap. But this is under dollar. So it's kind of like, but this is definitely a low hanging fruit. You would have, damn, I didn't see this, man. Why didn't someone sell it? 80's line, look at this, man. 80 line, 80 cent line. Freaking A, man. You would have made pretty damn nice percentage, guys. You see how the low hanging fruit work? So what you do is this. It's a very simple strategy, man. You look at the previous day, resistance, and that's where you scale. I would scale in the eight, 80 cents line, and then what's this top here? 80, whatever it is, okay? Then I want to scale in whatever it is as well, 82 cents or whatever. So that's where I start my scaling. I use these lines and I, I start my scaling. And dude, you wouldn't make money. But the thing is you have to see it. And that's why being disciplined trader outside of trading is very important because I I got suckered into drinking last yesterday and I, and I didn't show up to work. <laughs> and so I missed this low hanging fruit because I did not trade yesterday. Um, so I did not see this stock at all. You see how that works? Um, so you have to keep your 
your outside personal life in order if you want to be a good trader, in my opinion. I mean, I've, I've been kind of slacking off, to be honest, because the summer is slow. I mean, I like to live my life too, you know? And so I miss this opportunity. But when I came back today, I made sure that I sized down, that I was not having FOMO because I missed yesterday. I did not try to force trades. You see what I'm saying? So, so you have to know yourself because a lot of it is mental, guys. A lot of it is mental. So let's go back to this. Um, don't forget. So AFA, let's do the AFA, 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 AFA. So what I did after this is this. So um, Alex had a great trade in the morning. I did. I missed it. I'm like, oh fuck, I missed it. So I, I even texted him. Right? I was like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. I um I missed it. So I'm like, but I'm not gonna have FOMO. You know what I did, guys? I put out a fantasy order. When this sucker was at 640, I was so upset. That I missed the trade at seven, and you know what I'm saying? Because today is slow. These are the things that you have to fight in your head all the time, guys. <clears throat> all the time, you have to fight in your head. You have to fight FOMO. You have to fight being pissed off of missing the trade. You have to be okay with missing the trade. Okay? Um, and you know, you can get angry all you want, but just don't click that button. So I did not click that button. That's what I did. I put a fantasy order out at 677 to start. And then when it hit, bing, 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 I turned around. Oh, crap, I'm in. You know how fast it went? In a matter of minutes, it got to my fantasy order. Then I was like, oh, yeah, now I'm going to start scaling in, baby. It was so fast, I missed the talk, and I didn't put enough orders out. I put one to trigger me, and then I started doing it myself. Because in the past, what I did was I, did, I stacked up two way too much. And if it teleported, I'm dead. So I learned that from the ACMA thing, where, you know what, man? I'm going to put out one order or maybe two, and if it hits, it hits, and I can always add more. Why my mistake before was I had so much FOMO that I would stack all my orders up, and it would just, and AC, H, uh, AC, um, MA, last time, that's what we lost all that money on, um, it teleported $1. fifty cents, so it, it swiped, everything went up, and so that's why I was like, dude, so I learned from my mistakes, right? I learned not to put 10 orders out and bust my load too early on the front side because this is still the front side. This is the VWAP line. Anything over the VWAP line is still front side, okay? So that is the definition of, the simplest definition of, of the front side is over VWAP. But VWAP is not the all ending indicator. Look how much it dropped under VWAP. It got a reclaim and it's saved. And that's a danger sign, man. When a stock is well under the VWAP and it freaking goes to new high a day, that's a signal for you to not fuck around. But in the morning, I'm always okay. Before zombie time, I'm, I'm cool. If I put my lines in the outer resistance lines, I feel safe because what happens is the move has been exhausted. It's like a sprinter. In the beginning, it's like, dude, he's hella fast, but he's gonna start slowing down. It's similar to throwing a ball in the air. If you throw the ball in the air, it's going to apex is to hit the top and slow and drop. And that's the whole theory behind shorting. So I like to call this the first resistance. What the first resistance in my, uh, my strategy is, the first time it hits a major resistance, it should most of the time drop, okay? From profit taking because it's a resistance. Notice this resistance here, guys. So I use this as the basis for this scaling. So the 680 to $7 line, see that? Seven bucks here, guys. So that's why I started scaling right here. And it dropped, and what did I do? I used the lines around here to figure out where I'm going to cover. And that's what I did. I placed a bunch of money. I don't know where it's gonna bounce, guys. So I scale in, I scale out. And I got all the way down to 650, which is around here. You see how that works? Not magic, pre plan using lines. Anybody can do this. The hard part is waiting. If, and you know what, man? If it didn't hit, it didn't hit. I'm not going to have FOMO. I am not going to chase it because that's how I lose. So over time, my process is going to yield 
positive results. If I am disciplined, so I was disciplined enough, I don't need to get the top or the bottom. I just need to get the general area around my lines and then I scale in and I scale up. And so when I went back up, guys, I did the same thing. I keep doing the same thing. I went back up, I had orders at 677 and 687, didn't hit the second one, only did the starter. I covered it at the VWAP. And sure enough, it bounced off the VWAP, guys. You see how it's toying around the VWAP. I'm watching it, it's only five cents under the VWAP. People say, oh, under VWAP, I'm gonna load in the short, it's over. That's not how it works, guys. That's not how it works. The VWAP is just an indicator. Any indicator by itself may or may not work. All it's telling you is that's the volume weighted average price that people are buying. This red line right here, the VWAP, does not mean that just because it's under VWAP is gonna die. There could be guys buying this, and this is, once again, let's take a look at this. This is, dude, it's a million, a mil, thinking the float's like 151 million, 15% ownership. So there's some big guys in there. This is kind of like a semi-real company, man. It's $16 stock, over $5. All the indication, look at this, man. Market cap, 790 million. It's a real company. It's a real company. So it's not going to go to zero. So that's why, you know, you have to be, if it's, it's, if it's a front side short, you have to front side cover down. So that's why I covered around here. Okay. I'm basing around the VWAP area. And then when it went back up here, guys, remember I keep saying you, channel trading. I'm channel trading. I'm doing the same thing at the resistance line over and over until it breaks again. So notice when I entered here at 677, I put a stop 681 and it triggered. So that's why I did, you know, so it's the same thing. So I keep doing it until it doesn't work anymore. So I did it and it worked one time. So like I said, every time you do it, you get cushioned. So now this is money in the bank. And so what I do, I lost like freaking four cents here. Four cents, like nothing. You know what I'm saying? But the key here was stopping out, okay? And now it's 690. <clears throat> if you wanted to, you can now do a, a short at se uh, seven line, 705, maybe you do a stop at 712 or 709 or 710, you see what I'm saying? So it's up to you to figure it out. I mean, there's no magic number on where you stop out, but I use my lines as resistance and that's where I should stop in and stop out. But I do not stop out at the herd levels, like the sheep areas, right? Everyone's stopping out, let's say it's seven dollars. I'm an idiot to be stopping out seven dollars. Why should I be with the with the herd? I like to put it a, a little bit above because just in case they sweep the seven and go back down. Okay. If you are uncomfortable taking more than a five cent loss, that means you're sizing too large, guys. Uh, reduce your size, widen your stops. That is the key. Uh, if you're finding that you're always stopping out at the top or the bottom, it means that you're part of the sheep, that you should widen your stops, reduce your size. You'd be very surprised by reduction of size and wider stops, how you let the trades work and you will actually make more money. Oh shit, I'm up 20 cents. Oh, wait, no, did I short this? Well, only 10 cents. I'm gonna cover a 348 area. So let me put in this order, 348 later. Okay, hold on. <laughs> Uh, I'm placing a cover for 348 on WKS. Hold on, guys. And then I'm going to long it at 339, 38. Okay, let's place some magic orders. Uh, just place some orders here. Okay. Um. Any questions on this alpha? <laughs> I'm still trading. <laughs> I don't know what, <laughs> I, I mean, I, I love trading guys. When there's an opportunity for me to make money, it's, it, it's a big high. And so these are what I call fantasy orders. I'm just putting the orders out there, man. By putting the orders out there, I kind of curve my FOMO as well. If you have FOMO, go in fucking 100 shares or some ridiculously small size, right? 500 shares, 1,000 shares, something ridiculously small. So you, at least you scratch the itch. You know what I'm saying? So the most you lose is like a couple hundred bucks um, or whatever you want to lose. And so, you know, it's like, that's the sort of stuff I do, right? I mean, if I really have FOMO, but I use my fantasy orders, which kind of curves my FOMO as well. And, you know, so I just put it in there and then I use my stops now. You notice I never used stop before. I've, I've changed my, my tra it, trading. It's very hard to change bad habits, guys. And I'm like, and I'm like, dude, man, I have to do it. I have to do it. So I started using stops and now, 
the more you start doing it, the more it saves you, the more you're like, oh shit, that's fucking awesome. So, it, it, and so now I'm forming good habits. I'm placing physical hard stock now. <clears throat> that's why I'm not really scared, okay? Um, I'm not scared to leave, go, go take a piss, <laughs> you know? <clears throat> so that's after, guys. So you know, as you know, that's what I did. I, I, you know, once it broke this 380, I'm like, why the fuck am I messing with it? It's obviously trapping these shorts. It went down under VWAP significantly. Boom, back to high of day, guys. It's trapping shorts. And now it's over zombie hours. Look at the time. 10.30. Look at, look at this, man. I mean, I, I can't make this shit up, man. This is all by observation. 10.30 is our zombie time. Look what the low is, guys. The low is at 10.30. You see that? If you don't know this rule and you're slamming this bid, you just got fucked for 50 cents. Under VWAP. VWAP was 665. This was 650 something, 58. Under VWAP. Okay? So VWAP is a guide. Use it as a guide. There's not, you know what I'm saying? The death line for this, in my opinion, would have been under this spot and under this spot. 620, to be darn sure, under 620 would have been a death line. You could make a case for under 640, this spot right here. Notice this spot right here balances with this spot right here. And that's how, you, if you wanted to, to time the first bounce, that's where it would be. You see how I use the notches here? And notice, man, it, it lines up. That's why I call these the lines. It's kind of scary when this shit kind of like, you know, keeps occurring over and over, right? And that's, that's what technical analysis is. So, so that's this. Once it went over, I put a stop here. I'm done. I'm like, dude, I'm not going to mess around with it. I made money in the morning. I'm happy. Oh, why am I going to overtrade? So what I did well today, guys, is I stopped overtrading. <clears throat> overtrading is a very bad habit. But the problem, how do you stop bad habits, man? You just have to slowly create a new habit or physically leave the room, man. So, you know, I, I stopped trading this. I did the recaps and now I'm good. If I had shorted this thing, I would have lost. See, I broke my rule, shorting after zombie hours on a strong stock over VWAP. Notice this freaking zombie rule saved us, saved me. I stopped out. I broke a rule by shorting past zombie, but that's okay. You can trade any stock you got, want, guys. Break any rule you want, as long as it, you put in that hard stock. The moment I put in a 677 short, I put in a 681 hard stop to cover. And once the dead, I'm done. You see what I'm saying? I broke the rule, but that's fine. The rules, you know, sometimes it will go down because it worked two times before. The third time usually doesn't work. So what I did was I enter small, put a tight stop on the third try, done for the day. Made money on the same areas in the morning. Morning, that's why the first hour is always awesome to trade if you're short. The, the after 10.30, you gotta be careful. You see, this is a prime example of the zombie rule of 10.30. I may have broken the rule, but that's okay. Trading, who, know, who, who knows what's gonna happen, right? The key here, guys, was this stop. Hard physical stop at 680, 681. Okay, so that covers Alpha. Made money, no stress. No problem, no problem. Any questions on offer, guys? And we're gonna move on to another stock. Any questions on this offer? Uh, if you want, do a short here. Uh, maybe I should put a small short in the, and then stop out at 702. But yeah, I mean, I don't, Ah, screw it, man. <laughs> I still get this itch to shorts. Um, let me do it. Maybe I'll do it. Just, maybe I'll just do a tiny size. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll do a tiny size. I'll show you how to do it. Okay, let's do the tiny size for fun, guys. It's an exercise. Bye. Oh shit, wrong one. Hey, that's what's the short. <laughs> you see my mind on in there. What's going on here? Unknown symbol. What the fuck? Unknown symbol. Nothing here. 
Oh. Okay. Mm. I like to add to liquidity. And then the, when, when I do that, this is what I do, guys. I do a stop at market 702. Like this. You see that what happens? So now I, so basically, if it fills me, I have a stop. And let's see if it works. And so, see, it filled me a short, a 698. I put a stop at 702. And then write it on down. No problem. Small loss, risk reward. I may cover at 680 line. Let's see if it worked out. And that's how you do it, man. I put in an order, filled. I put the stop right away. Now I'm set. I'm set. You can also do conditional orders, all that, um, by doing this. Let's see. Here we go. Order type. You can arrange a trailing stop limit market. So Google on how to use that. Uh, this is the DOS platform, and we're using. Using our favorite broker, Cobra Trading. Okay, any questions there, guys? Um, I like the fact that this is a big wall. I call this a backstop. So when you ever hear the word backstop from me, that's what I mean, backstop. So let's fucking short this again. Let's, okay, so 701, let me see. Let's see, so that, mine's a 702. There's a reason why 702, you see that, guys? I'm still alive, I'm still alive. Because every sheep is stopping out seven dollars, guys. <clears throat> uh, the smarter sheep is stopping out at six ninety eight, six ninety nine. Because they're like, I'm gonna front run the seven dollar guys. You see? So I'm now I'm now my stop is seven oh two. So let's fucking short this six ninety nine again. Let me see. Should I do that? Let me see if it breaks. Uh, seven oh two is my stop, and I stopped out, guys. I stopped out. No harm, no gain, but you know what I'm saying? That, so now you saw an example of you know, how I do my stops, um, how to do the order on the stops. And you know, it was tricking the 701, you know what I'm saying? It could go down, but screw it, you know? I don't really need to mess around once it starts to, to break into a new high all day. You know there's some gains going on, there's strong support. I just don't want to mess with it. So I, you know, we lost. Freaking! How much do we lose? We lost four four cents, which is forty dollars. No big deal. Uh, but I so I wanted to show you. So that you know, any questions on alpha? I think we're we're done with this alpha. Okay. Pretty good examples. You know what I'm saying? You, you know these small stock paper cuts. No big deal, man. No big deal. Um, it's past zombie hours, so I shouldn't. Be, you know, you shouldn't even mess with it, guys. So the rule is already there. You know, you, I broke the rule two times. I lost tiny, but you know, the point is uh, you can try it. Who knows? Small paper cuts. I made a cushion here in the morning. Done. So that's Ava. Let's take a look at uh, RHU. Okay, here's RHU, guys. I'm looking back at this shit. I'm like, damn, I missed this whole entire thing down. The reason why is, let's go through the process once again. The process will answer most of your questions. Notice what I'm doing. I'm, I'm not doing anything that you can't do, right guys? Notice what I'm doing. It's just, I have a process in place that I trust. I trust my lines, I, I trust my process. So I'm just robotically, systematically, every day going through the same routine. You know, it's ingrained in my head over all these years, the same process. Nothing complicated, man. I'm not fucking pulling up anything that you guys can't fucking do. You guys are probably smarter than I am. I just go through my process very quickly because I'm used to it. So RHE, the first thing I did type in, I was like, oh my God, it's like a small ass float, dude. Small ass float. And so what I do is like, so I look, first I look at this float, then I, then I pull up my chart to take a look at the range. I'm like, aha, uh -huh. the sucker. So I look at this to see the tops of these, okay? The, the order that I work through is from the most recent 
way back to the year or maybe two years up to you, right? So I look at this first, I'm like, hmm, here. So I'm looking at the potential, where it could potentially go, potentially go to $4, 380, four bucks, then um, 450, then five, five bucks, right? Then I start to zoom in to get a better read on this. <clears throat> right there, guys, notice, notice this shit, dude. It fucking matches, 380 and 380. Magic lines, magic. Can you, can you guys do this? Dude, magic, nothing hard. People laughing about this, you know what? It's so simple and they're like, how the hell did this guy figure this simple shit out? That's because I'm not a fucking arrogant asshole to think that I know better than the markets that I'm gonna create some new mathematical fucking program that some that fucking PhD scientists have not figured out in the past 400 years of trading, right? <laughs> Whatever it may be, right? I'm just keeping it simple, stupid, man. Kiss. 380. 380. Knowing that the potential can go to four bucks and 450. I'm ready for that. So what did I do? Boom. All over the freaking 380 line, guys. And then I covered here, of course. The reason, once again, is because, dude, I'm scared of this low pro. Who the hell knows? Someone could come in and buy a freaking 500,000 shares of this shit and squeeze me. Three million market cap. <clears throat> we, also have, we also have we have this rule. Don't really mess around much with low floaters that someone can buy the entire market cap with. I can come in and buy this entire company if I wanted. So I did small size. And I was very, very protective of my gains. I wanted to build a cushion. So the way I do front side trading is this. You should not know. <laughs> but if you must, I'm okay with this. I'm using small size. I know my max risk. So I'm not really scared because I'm looking at my lines. And this is a huge resistance here, man. So I started to dabble with it. And then when it came down, I took my... What's it, 380 down to three freaking 40 cents, man. I made, you know, I made, this is my cushion. I built a cushion all day on this stock. It dumped, and I was like, fuck, fuck, I don't want to chase it. I don't want to chase it, it's a little float. And so I am okay. Some guys are holding this thing all day. Good for them. <laughs> That's not my stock. Good for them. I made my money. I'm sitting on it, waiting for a good opportunity. I'm not sitting around hoping it's gonna break trend and go down because it's this low float, guys. It's a low float. I'm scared of these low floaters, man. We've seen these things just zombie and teleport. So what I did was, I, of course I was pissed. Of course I'm pissed. I covered 330s here, 340s, and it went down. When it went down here, I was like, fuck, fuck, fuck. So what I did, I waited for it to go back up so I could scale it because we determined that around the three, let me see. Under 320, 310 is the death line. Okay, we figured that out over here. That's the lowest line of support. I call that the death line. Uh, VWAP is, ooh, I forgot what VWAP was at that time. It was 340, I think 340 something, 350 was the VWAP at that time, pre market. So all this was VWAP, guys. That's why I'm covering it the VWAP. Uh, the funny thing is, I didn't even look at the VWAP. I just did my lines, and the lines happened to match VWAP. I call that layering, layering indicators, right? And so it broke under VWAP, boom, and then it tanked. So when it tanked, I was like, fuck, fuck, fuck. But I also know one of my rules, my strategies under the 320 death line, 310 death line, that chances of it being saved is very small. But this is still a small cap, depending on the volume. They can save it or not save it. In this case, the volume at the pre-market was not very high. It was still under, the, the, the stock was not overly rotated. It was not overly rotated pre-market. That's how I determine and gauge strength. In, in pre-market, if it's already rotated two times, for example, get the fuck out. You don't short this thing. This thing is a hot potato, you know. But in this case, it was weak volume, and so that's why it went back down. Um, and then what I did was I played the safe, man. 
I played it very safe. I'm sure I left a lot of money on the table. But look how many times I freaking quote unquote scalped it for 20, 30, 40 cents. I made my money already, guys. Why the hell am I risking? Of course, you can risk a little piece, which uh, if I was a better trader like Tosh, Tosh would have kept a little piece <clears throat> and it rolled down. I did not do that. Um, I keep forgetting to do that because that's my bad habit I always do. I like to lock my money in, walk away and cry. Uh, better strategy was lock your money in and maybe save a piece of it for the potential of going down. That's what I'm working on, guys. I'm not the best trader. Like I said, I'm, I'm an old dinosaur that no one taught how to trade. I traded all myself. Um, no one posted charts for me to see. So this is why posting charts is very is a very good tool to learn from, guys. Watch these charts because with charts, you can figure out what people are doing and improve your own game. Uh, my game, obviously, is not the best. I do it okay. I'm always trying to learn. I'm looking at charts like from Tosh. He's holding a piece. I'm like, fuck, I should have held a piece. Maybe a quarter. You know, at least I'll get some more money um, when it flushes. So that's what I'm working on. I keep forgetting because I have a bad habit. But you see how that works, guys? Even I have a bad habit. So if you have bad habit, this is what you need to do. You know, figure out how to get rid of the bad habit. Consciously always think about it. Um, but, you know, my good habit works out well because I always like to uh, – scale back when it starts popping so i should be short of here and i'm just riding this mother down <laughs> that's it so you now i did this well so things i did well i always remember every day like i said go back to your trades review what you did well what you do poorly and what you want to work on i did well by by you know doing my research figuring out the lines shorting here covering here I did not do well by holding a piece. I can tell myself, I gotta hold a piece all the time. I did not hold a piece, a piece of this. Uh, so I missed out on like freaking 40 cent drop. I was like, fuck, you know? Um, but I did well when I started to recognize it was under the, the death line so I could scale the pops because now it's backside. And that's what I did. You see this, this curve? So I did this well. What I did not do well was in between. And so this is what I'm working on. So you see how you see how I walk through my mental process, guys, to learn every day from my mistakes. Um, it, this is a nice winner for me, but it's still I, I have a lot of room to improve. Once again, this is a low flow. Who the hell knows what it, it does? Uh, but holding a small winner could be helpful. Um, this thing happened so fast, man. I was it is way early pre market, guys. So I didn't know they were trapping. So I played it safe. You know, I played it really safe. And so if you stick to your plan, guys, you cannot be mad. My plan was, you know what, man, I don't care if it tanks. I made my money. I don't want to get trapped. Um, uh, to improve my plan next time, hold a piece. But look at this. See this, guys? Freaking trap. Good thing I didn't come back, right, guys? After now, you know what happened. You have to put your stops in. Uh, you stop out and get fucking back in. <laughs> it's, it's trapping, man. And this, you know, we, we told you the signs that it's a trap. Under VWAP, reclaimed to new high of day, dead meat, shorts. So any questions on RHU, guys? Now I'm just waiting for this sucker to pop back up anywhere near VWAP to, to, you know, to add more shorts. So I was going to ask why this is not a first bounce candidate. Uh, someone asked me the reason why it's not a first bounce candidate is because it breached the death line. Once it should have bounced at 320. You see what happens? So if you wanted to play the bounce, guys, if you wanted to play the bounce on this, put it where the support line is. The support line is 320. Notice, notice they are trying to support 320. It matches. Here, let me do the two days. You see this? This was the bounce. This should have bounced right here, guys. So if you wanted to play the bounce, you would have put the 320 line with a stop always use your hard stops guy because look it fell out boom if you don't have a stop you're freaking dead dude you're dead so put your stops out the moment it breached it i was like yes here's my opportunity please bounce and it did bounce i re-entered and made my money look at this man 310 260 shit dude that's 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 nice call me a scalper all you want man these scalps are adding up right 
So that's RHU, guys. Any questions on RHU? Let's take a look at uh, WKHS. WKHS. So let me see what I did here. So this was the chart for WKHS. Yesterday was a low hanger, which I missed. I'm pissed off when I when I logged out. I was like, damn, I missed a huge day on this stock. Kept on going down. You know, you know what I'm saying? It breached the death line. Um, from here. So here was the last support, guys, right here. So anything under here is a huge short, guys. So the death line can go back for two days if you want. Uh, you, we usually do the one day for the low floaters, but two day support is also a great thing to look. So this is the last support for the past couple of days. So under here, they try to save it, save it bounce to back up, they try to save it. And then underneath this would boom all the way down. But the death line for day one is, is big gives probability. I don't really use two day death lines. Uh, if it's past two days, I call that the support line. Uh, I, I'm saving the death line just for parabolic moves on, on these type of small cats on day one. So the, I, the way I do death line is usually for day ones, um, these type of crazy small cap, low floater type of moves, right? Parabolic kind of stuff. Um, the next day I wouldn't use this as a death line. I would use these lines as a guide for support and resistance to short into and to cover into. And so that's what I did here. <clears throat> so I used WKS from yesterday. Yesterday, you notice it had, um, what did I do here? 350, 360. Oh, okay. Um, so let's take a look at this. Let's, let's move this up. A little bit. Okay. So this is what I did, guys. I use multiple charts. You get, uh, notice you, there's a chart here using, and they have candlesticks, have all this. So you, you use as many charts you, you want, okay? Don't, don't just stick to one chart. So I use a, uh, different time frames and all that stuff. So WKS in the morning, you notice like I use this as a resistance. That's why I started scaling in, in the, initially at like the 360 line. You see this? It's because of this. So pre-market, it tanked all the way down to 310s. Then when it went back up, I started scaling at the resistance areas between 370 and 360. So that's why I based it upon this, see, 370 and 360. I used um, the resistance from pre-market to enter. And then what I did was it went down. I was hoping it'd go down more, it didn't. So I covered some here, then I covered some here. You see what I'm saying? So I actually uh, took a very tiny loss. I took a very tiny loss because I covered some here, which I made money from here. I covered here, which I lost here, right? So I made it small, but the key was stopping out. I was like, shit, it broke the resistance, 370. You see the 370 broke resistance, so I stopped out, man. I stopped out. I didn't lose much money. You see how that works. I stopped out so that I can go back to the next area. So the next area I'm seeing is 380, uh, four bucks. Four bucks is the, the, the area really we wanted. Uh, it may or may not get there. So what I did was like, I started to start to scale around the three, this is a $3.90 line. So 387, I started to scale. I have orders out higher, but never hit. And so, so I nailed it here and I covered that when it tanked down. So I made back my losses um, and then some, and then uh, I went long. <laughs> so <laughs> imagine me going long, okay? The reason why I went long is this is an example of the first bounce. I determined in the morning that the 320 was the support. And so when it started tanking so fast, so what are the first bounce is this, guys? The first bounce, I call the first bounce because it's the first bounce off of a major tank of a big move. So it, this is a big move, man. Went from 310 to 390. Boom, back down to 330. So I had to get in. And I used the support 320 as, as the, the line that I'm scaling. So I had 330s, 338 area. Uh, the next order would have been a 328 and then 318. I'm just trying to get the general area here. I don't know where it goes. And so sure enough, dude, this is a perfect freaking play, man. But I, I bought it twice down here and started unscale all the way back up here. And, um, 
And I actually short, this was a short too, when I sold it. I'm still short, oh shit. I'm still short at 370, 367, guys. Remember, I'm still short 367. Uh, what should I cover? What the hell have I cover at it? Um, so I shorted where the last sell was. So maybe at VWAP 340s. VWAP using DOS 348. Uh, which, yeah, I have a cover there already. I have a fantasy word 348. Uh, maybe I'll just do a little higher. Man. I don't have a, just so that. Let's see. Uh, 351. I'm just going to leave it. Fuck it. All right. Um, but you see, I'm trying to figure this out. I'm walking you through my my head, figuring out what I did. I, I did the first bounce here and went back up. And then I'm like, dude, this is a major resistance. It bounced so much so fast. So I'm scaling at 367, 377, but 377 never hit. So I'm like salivating for it go back to the high to the high resistance area. So that would have sized me more up here. These, this was just my starter right before I did the daily recap. So I don't have much size at all. Um, but it was enough. And so let me let me let me place some orders. Okay. Okay. So, uh, or 351 area. Let's see if it pops back down. Just go. Um, hey, man. 377. Wait, 367 to 351. That's 16 cents. Not bad. Not 16 cents. Not bad. Um, you see what I did here, guys? This is a very great example, man, of how. You short into the major resistance and then waited. I missed this entire move. This came out of nowhere. I mean, dude, I mean, I heard this came out of nowhere. It was so strong, guys. How can you ever be shorted here? But it, sure enough, dude, this, was, this was a trap. This was a trap. The guys are slamming under and thinking this will go down more. What is the meat? You always have to ask yourself, what is the meat? Let's take a look at this, man. Let's see what the meat is. 10 days. Dude, there's no meat left, man. You see that, man? There's no freaking meat left. The pivot is 328, guys. 328. Right here. 328. It got to where it needed to get. If you're short to five bucks, you hold it here, you bank, man. You see? The high pivot to the low pivot. What? What meat is left? There's no meat. So you're stupid, in my opinion, to be still hammering this guy way low here. What's the meat? The reason I'm shorting up here because there's a lot of meat because it went up so fast. And then I did the first bounce. Remember what I said about the first bounce? It works on the first time. <laughs> That's why I call it the first bounce. But you know, it just so happened I got lucky that it actually hit my first uh, entry areas. I had more at 328, but it didn't happen. So. And when it back when it back up here, so I'm trading this both sides, guys. I'm buying it when it's low, bouncing it up, I'm shorting when it's high. That's pretty cool, huh, guys? That is pretty cool. Let me let me see. I just want to doubt this thing, man. Because I'm doing the daily recap. Okay. Okay. Any questions on WKS? So we had a great example of shorting into the major resistance line. Um, and then um, the first bounce. Beautiful, beautiful. Uh, what else would we trade today? Sun W. Short up here. Okay, let's let's do Sun W. Okay. Nothing really major on this stock, guys. I saw a gap up. I used eighty and eighty five as the first resistance to short the front side. That's what you see here. Um, and then when it popped down, I covered. You know, I made 10, 12 cents, 10 cents, 10 cents. I mean, 10 cents may not sound a lot for these guys that are trading $100 stocks, but 10 cents on an 80 cent stock, that's a big percent. <laughs> uh, I cover the rest down here. And cry because I'm hoping to go back up to the view op so I can get back in. 
but didn't. So I have fancy orders all over this area here, you know, just in case it comes back up. So that's how I trade these. When it breaks down significantly like this, I try to get back in around the view up line to reshort. <clears throat> but all around the lines, man, and so you see these entries, that's why I'm getting these great top ticking because I, I, I do my research on my lines. I have such confidence in my lines. And that's why people think, how the hell are you top ticking all the time? This is no secret, man. But now I'm sharing with you how I do it. And so, you know what's going to happen? You guys are going to be my biggest competitors. <laughs> We're all going to be fighting for those areas. But you know what? Uh, there's a lot of volume to go around. Four million shares. I ain't shorting four million shares of this stock. So, uh, that's why, I, you know, it's okay to share these things with you guys. Any questions, guys? I'm gonna stop now and start taking questions. I don't want to get to uh, to do this too long. So let's let's take a look at you know if you have any questions, let's go at this real quick. What I did well today, I stopped out. Let's do a recap. I'm gonna do a recap of the recap. <laughs> what I did well today was I stopped out WKS. Okay, let's put that in. I stopped out here to get back at the high, which and then. Uh, I was patient. Notice I'm not adding longs all over here. Dude, my first entry was 338, dead on. I had 328, which didn't hit. So then I added, I had two orders here. So I hit here and I added and then went back up. So what I did well was no FOMO. I stuck to my process. I planned my lines and I executed around the lines. I did not have FOMO. I did my analysis. Let's, oh yeah, we didn't take a look at the analysis part yet. And so let's take a look at that. <clears throat> Where is this stuff? Well, oh, RHE, man. So everything I do, I look at RHE. So I'm looking for the effective and all of the warrants and shelves and offerings and ATMs, all that good stuff, right? I see nothing for a long time. So that's why I was kind of like nervous. I didn't want to be too committed, make my money and get the hell out of these low floaters. I shouldn't have even been touching these low floaters on the front side, but I used smaller side. I took my money, um, front side covers, front side shorts, right? So, and that's why. So there's no dilution. Uh, there's no obvious dilution. There could be always dilution, but there's no obvious dilution. Um, and the fact is, dude, even before the market opened, it breached the death line. When the death line, um breaches man i don't care if there's no dilution there the dilution is going to come from the bag holders all the, i guarantee you there are guys in other chat rooms who are accumulating this thing thinking finally we have a low floater with no dilution and that's going to kill all the shorts wrong you know why i'll give you a little secret man volume was weak and the secret is this, there's not many shares to short. I could not locate many shares to short. I was only able to find small size locates, which means that if I cannot find it across all the brokers I have, it means that no one else has it, which means no shorts are stuck. In order for these crazy stocks to go, if, if you take a look at the history of these supernova type of stocks that goes crazy to the moon and to the sun, uh, all those have something in common, guys. Low float, coupled with a lot of cheap, short low case that's available for everybody. Easy to borrow, stocks, ETB, which I like to call easy to blow up. And when I see ETB on a low floater, easy to blow up. Okay, so that's your secret, guys. Uh, not many shares to locate, which makes makes it a very crowded long side. And so when the death line breaches, all these bag holders are dumping. They're dumping. They're like, fuck, 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 fuck. And every bounce, they're selling into the bounce. See how that works, guys? Uh, VWAP, yeah, I mean, you, yeah, WKS, you, yeah, you could. I mean, you could under VWAP. Let me see here, VWAP's here, man. I don't want to change. What's the meat left? That's why I don't touch this. This is way over you up, man. 
way over VWAP. And the fact that this is way over VWAP and it dropped down, that's why I do the first bounce. Big move, real quick tank, first bounce candidate, strong stock. Way over VWAP, VWAP's here. Okay, any questions, guys? Let's take a look at the questions that um, the guys in the room wanted to ask. So let me take a look here. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Okay, okay, okay. Let's move in this. So here's the question that some people have. On the way up, do you add on the way up with more size at each level? Uh, it depends. I keep the same, but if it gets to the, a major one, I would add more. So what I do is I add more. So I keep the same size as, uh, so basically it's like, I mean, you, you can try what you want. Everyone has a different style. I, I do the same just to get a feeler. And then when it, when it rejects at a major line, that's when I start to add more and more and more. So what I add is just a small, small, small. It's like a little filler trades, filler trades. And then when I see the major resistance line, then I start adding more. On AFA, um, you were watching seven line, but it collapsed at 80. You should start to move to the top of the candle. What were you watching that make the decision for the trigger? You guys are overcomplicating this stuff, to be honest. Um, I saw resistance. <laughs> I mean, that's all I did. I scaled the resistance. <laughs> Nothing complicated. Um, uh, fudge factor for stops for new members. We talked about the stops. We talked about the fudge factor of stops and not being a sheep. So we talked about that. Um, we talked about RHE, why about the float, and why I thought that it was, you know, it was an overcrowded long. There was not many shorts. And then when it breached the death line, all these guys were sellers. That's why we got this collapse. Now it's on being up, guys. This is the thing with small, low floaters. Adding to winner without destroying your average. Fuck the average bullshit that people say. Add to your winner, man. Scale in, scale out. People, too many people all on a great average. But fuck, man, I'd rather have a bigger size and a, you know, a little lower average and make more money. So that's that. Any questions, guys? This is a short and sweet, sweet um, daily recap. Alex, what am I missing? Any questions, guys? We want to let you guys leave on an early, slow day. Um, what are you thinking? Any questions, Alex? Any questions, anybody? What am I missing here? Um, live trading. You guys like this stuff, man. You should come to the event. I'm telling you now. This is this is the opportunity of a lifetime, guys. Live trading. I may screw up, and you will like you will see it. Win the loser, draw the. You know, uh, the key is to learn. The key is to learn, guys. Any questions? And we'll end this daily recap earlier. Keeping it small and sweet. It's been an hour. Cool, guys. I'll see you guys in the room. If there's no more questions, uh, we'll be posting this up. All right, guys. Have a great day. Enjoy your weekend.